This is going to be an experiment in more ways than one. I have no idea if this is going to work. I'm going to try and build a finding machine. Uh, not for finding files, but for using files to shape metal. Just to be clear. I'll put a picture up. The initial design was going to be in aluminium, but ah, I'm too much work. And also, I wanted to experiment with plastic. So we're going to make this thing out of plastic, the frame at least. Um, measure the diameter of the crank, copying the oscillator up and down by that throw. So we know the total space that the crank, the oscillator needs within the frame. Then I can use those blocks as the basis to shape the frame around it. So that that's, will be the top limit. This is, will be the bottom limit of the, the frame. All we need to do now is complete it and make it nice, uh, reasonably nice looking frame. And of course, making sure that we have enough space on the top for that hat that holds the, the file to be able to move up and down. So that's one side of the frame. Also need to make an, a support for the table uh, that goes on top. And I decided to make the table round as kind of thinking about making the table adjustable so I can file under an angle so move the rotate the table 45 degrees so i can file something at 45 degrees but i looked at it and realized that i hardly ever do this what the no I'm not doing it so that the table and now we just need to add the other side of the frame that holds the table that will be bolted to the first block there we go. And that will close the loop and make it a, a structurally a stiffer shape uh, in total. Of course, we need to mount them together, but okay, let's add some color just to keep track of which part is which. I'm using bearings uh, for 12 millimeter bearings, uh, 32 outside diameter and 10 millimeters thick. So I need to make the holes for those things um, and a little ring inside to keep them separated. Uh, and uh, also the holes for the bronze bushings for the up and down movement. And then we need to make the holes for the, the screws. I'm going to be using M6 uh, inserts copper uh, bronze inserts nice long ones outside diameter nine uh, nine and a half millimeters long now four holes at the bottom three holes at the top and now we can put the first part in the slicer have a look um, I don't want to print at this orientation so let's do it that way I know that Cura has a nice feature now is select which surface you want flat on the table and that works perfectly. I was just too uh, lazy to grab it at the moment. Having a look at the slice, I don't like how little plastic, how little meat there is around the bearing holes, even though I'm using 50% infill. I don't like it and I don't want to use 100% infill. So, and because it's experimental, I'm going to add some more geometry just to make those edges a bit stiffer. And I'm going to do that by adding structure in the original CAD file that increases the material that the slicer puts down. And basically what I'm doing is making tiny little holes around the surface of the bearing spaced away from that surface just enough for three layers to be printed for the surface of the bearing and then three layers for the surface of that tiny hole and the tiny hole is going to be 0.2 millimeters in diameter or 0.4 millimeters i think i'm using in the end 
And by doing it this way, you can des decide exactly which areas of the print you want to be stiffer uh, than other areas. So you can add more material exactly where you want it by design. Uh, this is a fairly simple construction, just two rings around a hole. But you can imagine that you can also make it go in curves and just add stiffness where you need it, strength where you need it. Now let's look at this slice. Well, there's clearly a lot more material around the bearing surfaces, so that uh, certainly worked. So now printing it, uh, I really need to work on my <laughs> retraction settings. Hey, yes, okay. We're going to make the thing. Um, parts bit. This is one of my favorite boxes. It holds shafts of printers that I've taken apart. And I need a 12 millimeter shaft, 12 and a half. I can use this for the up and down motion. What's this? Way too. Now for this thing, I need a disc. Forty-seven. Okay. Forty-seven. First, started off with making the shaft. Uh, drilled a hole in the twelve millimeter shaft. Now tapping uh, M six thread. I've already turned the, the crank disc uh, and made a hole, a, a tightly fitting hole, 12 millimeter in there. So now I'm fitting the, the disc on it. I've chamfered it. So I'm adding a um, countersunk screw into there, tighten it up nicely. And then I can turn while it's mounted on the shaft itself, I can turn the face of the crank so that we know for sure that it's perpendicular to the actual shaft. And by mounting it all in the way that it's going to be used in the filing machine, I know for sure this surface now is perpendicular. I will then use that surface to clamp on in the, the mill to cross drill the hole for the crankshaft pin that will go into that bronze sliding block that's going to be inside the oscillator. So it needs to be 90, 90 degrees exactly. And by using this surface, I know that I can reference off that and get it exactly 90 degrees. Okay. Um, the other thing, of course, I need to do is uh, make the shaft uh, to the right length. Got some bearings and they fit. So I can squeeze this in, I think. And I might need to go deeper. Um, of course, it needs to be completely in line with each other. That's pretty good. Okay, so all I need to do now is seat the bearing. One smaller, yeah. OK, 
Okay. As you can see, I made a mess of that. What is the conclusion of this? And I have a motor that I have no idea what the revs are. So that's the first thing I'll have to figure out. Which is not a problem because I have a rev counter. Um, two speeds. Shaft that's way too long. So I can pick which one I want. Then of course I need to design a housing to fit this in. Okay, well, got the setup. Plugged it in, clamped the motor down just in case. Got my rev counter. It's all wired up. The switch isn't on, but it's not running because the safety switch is normally open. So if I push this closed, it will run. So now, let's measure the revs. I'm losing the tape. Sixteen thousand revs. Sixteen thousand RPM. I think it's way too fast. I was hoping something like three thousand. It's powerful enough. What else could I do with this? Okay, anyway, let's scratch behind my ear and figure it out. I said it was experimental, didn't I? <laughs> Jeez, Christ, come on, God. Ah. I'll be back.